morning is on pen testing voice biometric systems. Thank you. Great. Hi, I'm Jacob. And we're going to talk today about pen testing voice biometrics. So before I start, I'm going to show you a quick demo of how powerful this Fury microphone is. So uh, from here to the, to the back rows, it's going to be at least 20 meters, right? I'm going to need a volunteer from one of the back rows to just to say like a random number so we know it's him and my voice is my password. Do we have a volunteer there? Anyone? Oh, come on. All right, from the front rows. All right. You're happy to say that? No, just tell, tell just any number, and then my voice is my password. All right? Cool. Great. So I'm uh, just going to set it up, and let's try. Great. Great. So you already did it, but let's just confirm what is your password and what's going to be your password for the next 50 years if it was voice biometrics. That was it, right? So there is no demo, actually. This microphone couldn't collect uh, voice from more than five meters. Uh, but you were just happy to say my voice is my password on the record, right? <laughs> All right. So uh, here is a quick demo of uh, uh, I needed to build a database for fuzzing voice biometrics. Uh, and I needed to collect a lot of voice samples. So uh, here is a short video what I did. Uh, I don't know. Hi, I'm Jacob Kalusne, and I'm a security consultant at video of Missing Link. How security easy is to collect to voice tries for so, uh, uh, I'm voice biometrics? So I'm researching voice biometric security, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to build a database for fuzzing voice biometrics. So of course, who'd like to take part in the no Hey, sorry. Would you like to take a uh, part in one minute survey for science? Just for science. That's all right. <laughs> no? Okay. So I changed my, my text just to say I'm doing university research and I need to say, I need you to say my voice to my password. What's, what's with, the audio, with the video? Hey guys, sorry. Doing this university research, and I need to ask people to say, just to say, my voice is my password. Would you... My voice is my password. Great, thanks. We did that too? We did. My I voice is my password. Great, thanks guys. Thank no problem. Mind if I record? Yeah, it's okay. So, can you just say, my voice is my password? Yeah, my voice is my password. Great, thanks, mate. Yeah. My voice is my password. My voice is my password. Can you a little bit louder? My voice is my password. Great, thanks a lot, mate. My voice is my password. My voice is my password. Great. Would you do that too? Great. My, my voice is my password. Can you say my voice is my password? Great. Thanks. Do you mind it doing too? Yes. Thanks a lot. Yeah, great. So, uh, um, my voice is my password. Great. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You helped me. So, how about the people actually gave me this vote? They so, as you something. can see. Uh, that's, um, so let's actually go to the, to the presentation. I'm Jacob Kalusny, and I'm now a security consultant at the Missing Link Security in Sydney. Uh, I moved to Australia just a year ago from Europe, uh, where I've been doing a lot of, a lot of interesting pen tests. Um, so sometimes I do have interesting projects, uh, like bypassing malware detection mechanism in the browser, reverse engineer of pro proprietary network protocols, uh, enterprise solutions, or voice biometrics. A, solution which is totally different from anything I ever tested. So uh, back, back in Poland, back at Securing in 2015, I tested a few solutions. Um, some of them were, uh, were implemented in IVR channels, some of them in the mobile application. Uh, this was really extremely interesting because we are usually used to some uh, HTTP proxy tools or some, um, some network discovery tools, right? What are the tools for fuzzing the voice, or what are the tools to automate IV air calls, right? It's, this is extremely interesting. So there have been some general challenges about testing non-deterministic systems, uh, systems which use machine learning, data science, uh, because basically it's not like, it's not deterministic. For, for SQL injection, you send one payload and you've got the response and you're sure the vulnerability is there. Here, you find something, the system responds in some way, but what, does, it, does it make a vulnerability? That's a good question. 
So I'm, just to say that I, I'm not saying that voice by metrics is a bad uh, is a bad idea. I'm not saying it's a good idea either. Uh, probably many voice by metric vendors uh, would not like this presentation to be published. Uh, but I'm trying I'm trying to do some like constructive criticism of of these solutions, and uh, I'll give some ideas of how to make them better. So we all know that pins can be shoulder saved. Um, Passwords can be stolen, right? Uh, tokens can be can be hijacked, right? Uh, and SMSs can be intercepted. So some vendors came with a solution to use voice as an authentication mechanism. How does it work? Uh, so so uh, first first about the patents. So currently there are around thousand patents on the voice biometrics area. So there is a lot of lot of research there. I know that there are not only vendors who create voice authentication mechanisms, but I know that there are data scientists on universities uh, which organize contests like competitions for spoofing the voice or to, to just to make the solutions better. This is, this is, really, uh, is really ongoing and is widely implemented now. Uh, is, it, is it new? It's nothing new. I found that Risky Business number 10 in 2007, already, uh, already uh, Patrick was discussing um, voice biometrics, right? So the question is, how does it work? To be honest, I don't know. It doesn't matter, because the, the approach I'm doing is more or less bl uh, black box. Of course, I read a lot about this, uh, the whole maths uh, after that, uh, behind that. Uh, I, I tried to inject into those old math calculations Fourier transformates or something like that. A lot of, st uh, lot of statistics there. Uh, but the thing is that all of this is patented, so you, you're not actually you're not able to see what's what's behind the what, what are the algorithms, right? Uh, so, from the functional point of view, the enrollment is that you have to say the phrase. So, for example, my voice is my password three times. Then the authentication you usually just enter the customer ID uh, and say my voice is my password. So this should work even if you have a sore throat. Even if yesterday there was a good upset party, um, even if you get older, and the one of the protection mechanisms is that it should not work if you replay audio from a recording. And uh, let's actually try that. So the current <coughs> sorry, the current state of implementation is that. There is a, uh, if you call the bank, there is a voice authentication mechanism. If you, if you are actually you, you're authenticated, it's okay. But if not, the system falls back to the standard password, right? If you don't know the password, the system will fall back to IVR and security questions, so you can reset the password. If this doesn't work, you'll, you can go to the branch and, and just set a new password, right? So um, some, some person called that below one factor authentication, because you can use either voice biometrics or, not and, passwords. So the thing is that the, the current state of, of voice biometrics is that nobody yet, there, there were no live attacks on, on accounts protected by voice biometrics mechanisms, right? It's not actually, it's, it's getting more popular, so probably there will be some attacks in future, but currently the attacker would just attack the standard password mechanism or the IVR and security questions, and in the first step, he'll just uh, say nothing or uh, say a different phrase just to, just to fall back to the standard password. But let's see what happens when you actually try to hack voice biometrics. So the main parameter of the quality of, of a voice biometric solution is the equal error rate. Uh, FAR is a false acceptance uh, rate, and the F uh, FRR is um, false rejection rate. So false rejection is if if you are actually trying to authenticate to your own account and the system that does not recognize you, this is basically a functional um, parameter for the business. And we consultants, pen testers, want to focus on uh, false acceptance rate. So I want to auth authenticate to another account with my password, uh, with my voice, and, uh, and how the system will react. Right? So, I've been testing a few solutions. Um, I've, done some, uh, I've done some research on public data, and this is the current security of voice biometric solutions. So the, the equal error rate is when the false acceptance rate and false rejection rate are the same. It's around 1% now. Do you think it's a lot? I don't think so. 
the, according to various university scientists' um, documents, the, the biometric strength of the system uh, of 1%, that's basic. While we're actually trying to implement it in banks in, in high risk environments. So we want it to be at least medium, right? Or it would be perfect if it could be high. So this is, this is um, a table from one of the vendors of what is the false rejection rate, false, uh, false rejection rate, and false acceptance, right? This is around 1.5% of equal letter rate. Uh, from a, from a big vendor. They added the new column, which is um, additional security, so that they are asking for a, for a secure PIN number or something like that. So that's like a second factor. And with that second factor, they can go down up to 0.4 or 0.2%. Um, this is a lot. So if I ask you, what is the false rejection rate for a standard password mechanism? Anyone? Zero, yeah. False acceptance? More or less zero. That's the probability of collision of the hash function, right? So we're talking about totally different numbers here. So we can do a horizontal brute force. I can record my voice. Uh, if I can iterate through all the customer IDs in the IVR channel, I can just use my voice, repeat it 100 times, and try to do a horizontal brute force on 100 accounts, and probably I would get access to one of them. This is scary. So, uh, yeah, this is the combination with the process security. How do they measure equal error rate? So in the ideal world, this is actually from one of the vendor, uh, vendor leaflets. Uh, in the ideal world, they'll, they'll take 100, uh, 3,000 uh, 3, participants. Half of them will do proper authentication, and half of them will try to spoof. Right? Sounds good. But in practice, it's generally not practical. This is actually still from the vendor leaflet. They're, what they're doing, they're, they're taking 300 participants who can make five or seven true calls and 10 imposter calls. Uh, and and the, later they say, ah, generally tests with less than 100 participants are considered anecdotal at least. Uh, so uh, what we're talking about, hi, guys, you're, innovate, you're putting innovative technology into the uh, online banking. You're doing data science, uh, almost rocket science, and you cannot simply take all of the uh, 3,000 uh, or here 300 part, uh, recordings and just cross-check them all. It's easy. It's, it's one line in Bash. I can write that. Instead of this, they're just taking five or seven user, tr user calls and 10 or uh, 12 imposter calls, while they could automatically parse it and do 300, so the whole uh, surface, right? So let's do some science. Let's say we want to attack a voice biometric solution. I want to spoof somebody, right? I've got more or less an average voice. Not, uh, not, not low, not high pitch. I've got a normal voice, right? So I'm on that line, I'm a spoofer, and I'm somewhere here, right? Or actually, yeah, I'll put this. So the, the uh, central limit theorem says that the, the pitch of the voice or any parameter of the, in the general population will have a, will have a Gauss, uh, Gauss diagram, right? So if I have an average voice here, and I'm trying to spoof somebody, I'm mostly targeting these people, right? If somebody has a high peak pitch voice, he would rather target people with high peak pitch, right? So we don't expect Morgan Freeman trying to spoof the voice of Frodo, right? And this is what they're doing. So if they're calculating the equal error rate by randomly choosing that this guy will attack this one, this one, and this one, in the, in the all, like, in, in, uh, after all, statistically, Morgan Freeman will, will as well try to spoof Frodo as well as the second Morgan Freeman. So something is wrong here. The actual attacker will choose a different attack surface. So Morgan Freeman will just attack his family, right? Uh, and this changes totally the numbers of the false acceptance rate. So if we are able to 
lower the false accept, uh, make, make the false acceptance rate a little bit higher from 1% to let's say 10%, which is not a lot, uh, we can get significant, uh, significant overall success rate because we're doing um, free calls. We can, we can, uh, we can, the system blocks the user after free calls, let's say, so we can, we can make free attempts, right? This changes the numbers significantly. So the vendors can implement two level of protection against this kind of attacks, um, or two, two parameters. They can set a constant threshold so that the, the threshold on the, on the pitch voice is, uh, or the pitch of the voice is, is constant. So then the average voice can spoof a lot of voices while the not, not average voice will just spoof just a few, few voices, right? If they try to, put, uh, to keep the constant fal false acceptance rate, it will happen that the high peak pitch voice may spoof a wide variety of voices, right? So it's not perfect, and it cannot be perfect just because, because maths work, right? So uh, yeah, this sounds funny, but gender does matter. Uh, because uh, women and men have different voices, right? And algorithms for voice biometrics, as well as for spoofing voices, is totally different for men and women. Um, so while you're doing a pen test, you, you need both male and female voice, just to be sure that you, you bypass the whole system, right? So let's do a quick threat modeling of those solutions. Uh, there are a few groups of attacks. Uh, for example, there are attacks on the enrollment. Uh, but the thing is that it requires, uh, the, the likelihood of such an attack is quite low because you have to, uh, you have to, for example, record or do a man in the middle on the communication just when the enrollment happens and it happens once while the authentication happens many times after that, right? Uh, we can look for some information disclosure. <coughs> Sorry. Information disclosure. So, for example, we want to compromise the whole server of voice biometrics and let's say download the voice prints. They do not store the recordings, so they store some hashes, let's say, or uh, mathematical representation of the voices, of the voice prints. Um, but it actually happens that, that for the first few months where they actually have to uh, tweak the parameters and make the software better functionally, uh, they actually keep the recordings. And denial of service, so we, we may like do a DOS attack on the voice biometric system so that other people cannot uh, authenticate, right? Uh, I will focus in this presentation on the authentication bypass because the likelihood of such an attack is, is the highest one. So we've got some vendor approved scenarios. We can hire spoofers, we can do horizontal brute force. That's what do they do as for the proof of concept. We can attack the integration. So, uh, yeah, audio codec exploitation. Think about that. You, you, whistle, you whistle some tone and you get a shell. That would be cool, right? Um, mobile API pen test. So, if it's integrated in the, in the mobile application, maybe the, the, uh, it has a standard web application or API, um, uh, API solution uh, vulnerability, right? Or we can abuse the process, and there will be a lot of process abuse in this presentation. We'll try to find ways of how to choose the spoofers or how to abuse the, how to fast the voice so that it is efficient. And we, ha we can have speech synthesis. Uh, this, is, um, this is something which is actually new. So Adobe, Adobe Voco, there is software which claims to, uh, actually all of these three softwares, Adobe Voco, Google WaveNet, and uh, Liabed, they all claim that it's enough to record somebody just for a few minutes uh, and have enough information to spoof his voice talking any sentence. This would be scary, right? Uh, none of this solution is public yet. Uh, I contacted the vendors, but uh, nobody seems to be happy to cooperate. Vendors, uh, voice biometric vendors hate them. So we can also do a replay for, from the recording, right? So we can do a direct uh, recording on the mobile if you've got a malware or if you can intercept GSM. The thing is that if you can intercept GSM or if you can have a malware on somebody's mobile, you can do a lot of more interesting things than uh, re uh, recording his voice. You can actually stop the communication 
and just pass the recording to the system so that it's not detected as a replay, right? So this scenario is most probably the, the, the highest likelihood that there will be a direct, um, direct um, attack on the mobile or, uh, or the computer, uh, but it's, it's not protected by voice biometrics. It's just, it's just the uh, platform security. And we can have a distant recording, right? So uh, let's say this microphone, I can record somebody, maybe not from 20 meters, but from five meters at least. Um, and the sneakers attack. So there was a movie. Who's seen the movie Sneakers from 1984? Well, not so many. Um, so basically, uh, it's like from 1984, and they included a, a trailer of actually hacking voice biometrics. The guy recorded himself, uh, somebody else, uh, rearranged the words in the recording because he didn't record somebody saying my voice is my password, but totally different words, and replay that from uh, from, me, uh, from the device. All right. So, what's the risk? What's it, what's what's the risk um, of of new solutions coming onto the market. So for example, IoT. There are toy pets, uh, cloud pets, um, which have been recording kids. Um, you can, you can, kids could talk to a doll. Uh, actually, I have such a doll. So <laughs> two days ago, my, um, uh, my friend Suave Jasek uh, has been um, doing a workshop on hacking IoT, and this is his doll. You can actually talk to this doll, and it's, um, I think this one communicates with Alexa um, to automate uh, some of the stuff, right? So this actually happens. And what happened in case of cloud pets is that their database was hacked. The, I think the MongoDB um, was published, and you could actually download all of the voices of the kids. And maybe there was a parent there saying, my voice is my password. What else? There is a CIA implementation of Orwell uh, 1984 telescreens, um, together with uh, with Samsung smart TVs. So basically, CIA hacked the Samsung smart TVs, and were able to record people um, silently, uh, it, like invisible, so that you cannot see that the LED of the microphone is is uh, turned on. Right? This is this is crazy. So it may happen that the voice biometrics is secure, uh, the the online banking system is secure, but at some point you're uh, you're saying my voice is my password, and your IoT cloud-connected microwave will, will uh, gather your voice and do something, uh, do something uh, malicious with it, right? So let's go to actual penetration testing of voice biometrics. Uh, we are going to imp implement, like, come with a test scenarios for a voice biometric system uh, in a mobile app implementation, in IVR implementation, and the main task will be to bypass the replay attack scenario and uh, as well abuse the process. So we're gonna, we're gonna to do it in three, uh, three uh, stages. The first will be the gathering of the voice. We need to collect the voice and we need to do some vocal isolation. Then we need to fuzz it, change some parameters of the voice. The question is which ones? Uh, we have to identify the thresholds so that, uh, so that the, the voice trial will go through but it will be not detected as a replay, let's say. And we have to do the, the impersonation, so we have to automate all our requests and um, gather the responses efficiently. So what we're talking about is, uh, is, is first the voice gathering. So these are a few microphones I have used. Uh, these, these prices are in Australian dollars. The original research I did with a Nexus 5 and the standard journalist microphone, Sony uh, ECM, it, it gave some good results. But we can do better, right? I bought this uh, cheap Aldi microphone for $15, and uh, this was not directional microphone, right? But if you take it out, you can make a directional microphone out of it, right? What do we have else? We have Rode video mic. This is a Rode video mic. It has this, uh, this, is called, this is professionally called a dead cat. And this is the actual microphone. Quite small, quite portable, so you can collect voices on the street or from the cafe. Uh, we've got Rode NTG for $700. You can actually rent it from a company for $40 a day. And you've got this perfect solution, Clover Mic, which they use on football fields to record audio of football players. So this is claimed to have a range of 50 meters or even more. Imagine that. All right. So. 
let's say we recorded the voice trials in a cafe in quite, um, quite loud environment, right? So we need to isolate the voice. When I, when I first recorded people from, from five meters, four meters, three meters, we, um, I came with, with the um, threshold that the system accepts my, my voice trial if it's around two meters. From five meters, it wouldn't catch it, right? But after you do some noise reduction, maybe some high and low pass filter, amplifier, right? We need to add alleged noise. This is tricky, I'll tell you later why. Uh, this, of course, these values of how much you have to re uh, reduce the noise differs amongst voice biometric solutions. But after that, you can actually increase the range from two to five meters. And five meters in a cafe, this is, uh, this is something, this is a viable attack, right? So, uh, yeah, some of them call it this attack cooperative. And some solutions rely on the noise. So, you may seem to have a perfect recording of, of somebody, but it turns out that it has the same noise, so the noise is copied from other recording, and the system will detect it. Uh, it may happen that you're calling an IVR, and the process looks like you have to enter the customer ID, and then you have to say, my voice is my password. And when you play a recording in the second phase, you're putting also a noise which was not in the first stage when you were entering the customer ID. The system can detect it. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you how does it look from two meters. This is without noise cancellation. This is DPMI from two meters. This is with This is DPMI from two meters. And this is enough for the voice biometric system uh, to be uh, to be properly authenticated. And now this is from. <laughs> tricky. Right, let me do it this way. This is video mic recording with the dead guy. And this is also enough for the voice biometric system to be properly authenticated, right? Oh, no. Oh, sorry, guys. All right. So, Let's say we already collected the voice, we did the noise cancellation, we isolated the vocal, and now we need to do some fuzzing. So, first we have to understand what are the thresholds. So we have this original recording, it says my voice is my password. There is, there is a threshold on many parameters, it's not only pitch of the voice, it's not speed of the voice, uh, it's like voice biometrics magic of at least 20 parameters, and there is some threshold for a detection of replay, right? If it's similar enough, it's going to be detected as a replay, right? Then there is a threshold for a correct answer. Uh, then we have, the, the system can be unsure, so maybe it's correct, maybe not, and then incorrect, right? So what do we want to do is we want to record somebody who is already enrolled in voice biometric solution. We want to modify the voice um, low enough so that it's still in the in the correct um, correct state uh, correct uh, threshold, but high enough, strong enough, so that it's uh, it's not re uh, detected as a replay, right? So I came up with uh, with these really simple parameters. These are linear functions um, because it should affect the replay detection, which is basing on the wave form of the system, but it's not basically modifying. Uh, the spectrum of the voice, which is analyzed by voice biometric system, right? So I used SOX, a Linux package, for modifying the uh, voice, uh, modifying the, the uh, vo uh, audio files, and I came up with, uh, with this solution to try a different level of noise reduction on three levels, right? Then the changing the pitch um, 
13 levels, changing the speed by nine levels, random pauses and background noise. And the problem is that if you multiply all these values, uh, it, can, it uh, comes up to 38,000 recordings. And if you've got 10 or 20 days for a voice parametric pen test, this is not possible. This is two days of constant audio, and still you have to play it, you have to collect the response. So what is doable? Doable is probably around like 100 or 300. How does it sound? I'll show you. Uh, first, I'm going to show you this. After a few days, your colleagues will ask you to work from home. Uh, and after a week, actually, after a week, uh, you'll be actually <laughs> taking your phone and saying, my voice is my password. Because how does voice fuzzing look like? Uh, again, it looks like this. Authentication. My voice is my password. 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 And again with the second parameter. Authentication. And you my have to work with that for a week listening to this. My voice my is my voice password. My is voice is my password. password. You wake up in the night and you say, my voice is my password. All right. Let's go further. So we have to come, uh, come up with a solution which will optimize the number of trials we need to send, right? So I came up with this, let's say, recipe for, for hacking voice biometrics. So if we have a possibility to turn off the replay detection, uh, that's great. We just ask the vendor or the client to turn off the replay detection, and we do the threshold identification phase. Or if there is not the uh, replay detection, we'll have to re-enroll re each time. We test each of the five parameters separately. So first we're going to test 10 levels of pitch, then 10 levels of speed, but not together. We're not joining them yet. We determine the maximum value of, of the changing the parameter. So let's say it will be 25% of, uh, of speed. And th th this is accepted and 26% doesn't get ac accepted, right? And then we choose three levels for each parameter. Zero, no, no modification, the maximum, which was 25%, and half of the maximum, which was 12.5, right? And then we go to the second stage. As we have now these values for each of these five parameters, now we join them together at three levels, so at zero max and max slash two. This should generate around 250 trials, and we can do that physically, um, calling the IVR and sending these voice trials, right? Then we choose the most successful trials, probably it will be less than 100. And with replay detection on, we try all of these modifications, select five or 10 best values for stability, and, and we should have around five or 10 combinations of parameters, which will generate more or less stable attack. Uh, well, I tried it and it worked. So the process, as I said, looks like following. There is an enrollment, and we have to authenticate with a phrase. What is the phrase? I ask you to say my voice is my password because that's the most popular one. The second most popular is sign me in to the XYZ bank. It's a little bit better because it's, it specifies that this phrase is only for the bank XYZ, right? And not for the second one. And we've got the third, third one. So my name is Jacob and my voice is my password. This is also good because you specify that it's your password and you cannot do a horizontal brute force by iterating through customer IDs, because you don't know the names of the people, right? But none of them is perfect. So we actually, what should be done, the phrase should be, my name is ABC, and at XYZ Bank, my voice is my password, right? But nobody will accept that for the business. So the authentication phase in the IVR looks like the following. You have to call the number. You have, probably you have to dial the uh, customer ID on the, by DTMF tones on the keyboard, and then say the phrase. If there is a success, that's OK. There will be a system saying, yeah, press 1 to hear the account balance. If it will be incorrect or replay detected, it will be the end of the call. Or if the system is unsure, there will be a repeat, right? In the mobile app, there is a huge security protection by the sole fact that the mobile application is already paired with the account. So we cannot just. Uh, call the IVR channel and uh, do a horizontal brute force, you cannot do the, if, if mobile application is properly implemented, you cannot do a horizontal brute force because you have to have a paired account. And th then you say the phrase and it's a similar process. Um, 
So I started testing those thresholds and discovered that there are a lot of challenges there. The first challenge is that you create an account, you enroll your voice, you authenticate properly, and then you want to abuse the system. That's great. So you, call, uh, you enrolled it and you authenticated maybe five times, and then you want to abuse the system. And the vendor will say, no, you made a weak enrollment. And actually one of the vendors detect weak enrollments. Weak enrollment, maybe there was too much noise, or not enough vo uh, noise, or your voice was not clear. Um, there could be also a second challenge. These are all machine learning solutions. So the more proper authentications before the actual abuse, uh, the better will be the false acceptance rate, right? So you may come up with some attacks which won't be viable in real, real attack scenario because your victim will have a database of a thousand voice trials and his false acceptance rate parameter for him, the threshold, will be not bypassable, right? Um, yeah, so we want to repeat the authentication phase many times so that we're sure that the system works properly. But the thing is that if there is a weak enrollment or if the attack works only once, it's good enough for the attacker just to steal money, right? Next challenge. We create an account, we enroll the voice, let's say it's, it's voice A. We create the second account and we want to use the same voice. Is it possible? Does the system allow similar voices to be um, used? Or does it affect the replay detection? Does the system do replay detection across all users? Maybe that's the way to detect horizontal brute force. And so the solution, probably you need more voices. It's, it's, not, it's not super hard as you, as you, as you could see, uh, but you need to prepare that. Another challenge, you create an account, you enroll the voice, you transform the voice with, let's call it modification function. You pass it to the system and the system says it's incorrect. It didn't authenticate you. But you do the same modification of the voice for the second account, for the second voice, and it works. So the solution still, we need even more voices. Uh, because if the attack works only for uh, mail, it's still a vulnerability, right? More challenges. Create an account, enroll the voice, and record it, transform it with a light modification, so just 5% of the speed, let's say, uh, and strong. And then you pass only the light modification to the system, and the system says replay detected. It went to this red um, area of replay detected, right? Then you pass the strong modification, and it's replay detected as well. But if you passed the strong modification at the very first time, it may have been a success. Because after the first trial, the, the thresholds were changed in the system. So previous authentications affect future ones. Um, hint, well, you can ask the vendor to turn off the learning mode um, and do more tests. It actually, it, it, takes, uh, it makes it even harder because you have to make a, lo a lot more scenarios to test. All right, next one. Process hacking, process weakness. Create an account, you enroll the voice, you transform the recording with some function, and then you pass this modification to the system, the system is unsure. You do it a second time, the system is still unsure. But in the third try, it is a success. What happened? What happened is that voice biometrics vendors know that their solutions are not perfect. They want to increase the false rejection rate because the business asked to do it. So just in the third try, they're increasing the thresholds, or like lowering them, so that allowing more voice to be accepted as, as a success, right? This is a vulnerability. Um, so there may be a different threshold during one call. Um, so in some solutions, it's, it's good to abuse the system in a third attempt. Then the last challenge. Create an account, you enroll the voice, you transform it with two functions, small and big. Then you pass the big modification, it's a success. Then you pass a small modification many times, it's always a failure. And then you pass the false, uh, the big, big, big function one more time, and it doesn't work basically because the thresholds changed not between one call, but it changed for this user. Uh, so let's call it the brute force attack detection. So the hint is to identify thresholds on Mueller accounts and confirm the actual attack scenarios on the target account. 
all right, I lied, this wasn't the last challenge, There's, there is more. So we create an account, we enroll the voice, we save the recording, we pass the recording, it's a success. Then we modify the vocal, but we leave the noise. And as I mentioned, if we pass it to the system, the system may detect it as a replay, just because the noise was the same on the, both recordings, right? Okay, that's it. So we, we need to generate a new random noise each time. So that's it. So, uh, yeah, well, I achieved that. You, you may achieve using those methods more or less a stable replay detection mechanisms. So in my case, this was threshold set to normal, standard environment, medium loud environment, uh, process hacked. It was like a gray box, so we didn't have access to the algorithms, but we had some um, in view, uh, view to the system. There was no ideas. But the question is, is this a vulnerability? And how to actually transform it into the report? So just repeat the steps. The person will repeat the steps that it might happen that on his voice it won't work. So what is, what is the proof of concept here? Um, all right, we did the fuzzing. Now we need to automate it so that we can automatically send 300 or 500 voice trials to the system, both the IVR and the mobile app. So for the VoIP integration, we can use, uh, I used Skype for Pi. Now it turns out that it's not easy, uh, like the Skype doesn't give the API now. So it was not perfect, not fully automated. The Skype for Pi actually runs the Skype binary so that the whole window with uh, call uh, has to emerge and you can do one call at a time. Uh, but it was like cheap and uh, good enough for the test. So you can use any other VoIP or uh, like a SIP account. Uh, you can even do mobile application, uh, connect it with a jack jack cable to your computer and reprogram the audio in input and output with HDA jack retask. Well, you can do it. Or you can write the whole parser in Skype for Pi or any other library for VoIP integration. Uh, what you have to do is, uh, or, or use the method I used. I used like a little bit of bash scripting, a little bit of Python and Pavu control. With Pavu control, I turned off, uh, turned off the uh, physical microphone. I rearranged the audio output so that I could play my recordings from uh, MP3 files to Skype and record what happens, uh, what the system responds. All right, generating DTMF tones, that's pretty simple. Um, response gathering, the perfect if we had access to the API. Um, we could do some speech recognition, there is pocket sphinx, but the problem is it, uh, it works only in English. Uh, there are free or almost free solutions like uh, Google Cloud Speech or Alexa, or I came up with a cheap hacking solution of um, analysis of the response length. So all of the three types of the response, authentication rejected, please repeat one more time, and successful authentication, had different length. So I just reduced the noise, in this case of four, by 14%, uh, 14 uh, with socks, and I just calculated the length uh, and using some bash function, uh, which basically cut the, uh, the voice vocal out of it and, and just calculated the length. All right, so after all, we, we have the process, so we take the, the next fo uh, fast voice print, the bash script had to do it, call the number, dial the TMF tones, play the voice print, decide which voice print, repeat it maybe many times, then collect the response if it's authenticated or not. So integration of these libraries is, is a key element. This is uh, one of the vulnerabilities, actually, um, also from Swabek, the, the guy who likes the dolls. Um, so there was a mobile um, HTTP request, uh, HTTPS, of course, um, which sent the voice trial to the system. And it had the parameter for the frequency. And there was a file upload limit, but it happened that just by passing a different frequency, the system tried to play the recording with a different frequency, 44,000 times lower, and it DOS the system. Uh, basically because the system was trying to play it for 200 hours. So often, the voice biometric solutions are implemented as a third-party code. This is like a box, and the vendor comes to the bank and says, hey, this is the box, you'll connect this box to your mobile app or connect this box to your IVR, and we do all the rest, and we'll just send you the response if it's authenticated or not. It's not a perfect solution. Like, who guarantees the, who guarantees the software uh, security lifecycle inside their company? Uh, it happened to me many times. 
uh, that there was a man in the middle um, on the HTTPS requests which, uh, which do the authentication, or for one of the 2FA, it also happened uh, that the, the whole banking app was secure, but the 2FA solution from a vendor was uh, vulnerable to man in the middle attack, right? So these, these sessions of voice authentication should be distinguished. Some of them are, actually are, so they have lower functionality if the account is authenticated with voice rather than the password. So a quick summary to finish. Do a threat modeling. Like, as I always say, pen test without threat modeling is, is bounty hunting. Business assumptions, which you can get from the vendor, will help you design the test scenario, right? Try to turn off the learning mode. Uh, as I said, you'll have more scenarios to test, but the output of your work will be better. Uh, identify the thresholds on one account, try to attack the others. Um, well, the thresholds could be increased or decreased uh, during one call or for one user. Uh, and try to do tests with some voice cancellations or without. So there, there could be some replay detection. And it doesn't matter much which solution you choose for, um, for playing the voice, like if it's Skype, if it's vo voice over IP or, or something. Actually, if there is a bigger noise, sometimes it's even better because the system has to work harder to, to get your voice out of it and maybe it will lower the thresholds for you. All right, so generally the idea is good. The problem is always the implementation, right? And it should be tested thoroughly. Uh, so the, the, the best outcome of this test was that the solutions which are implemented in mobile app, uh, they have to be paired and basically they're more secure than the IVR ones. My plan is to uh, publish this research at OASP Cheat Sheet. As you can see, there is no link for a draft because there is no draft yet. Um, I'm trying to cooperate with vendors. If you've got any uh, experience with pen testing voice biometric solutions or, I don't know, you work for a bank which tries to implement voice biometric solutions, I'll be very happy to talk about, uh, talk about voice biometrics with you. Yep, so I'll, uh, I will publish the, uh, some of the code soon. It's not rocket science, it's just some basic automation scripts. And thank you very much.